focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Unlimited opportunities. Unlimited potential. Unlimited scope for mutual benefit. As part of this series, we bring to the fore some of the most exciting collaborative efforts between Australia and India. This week, we focus on innovations in healthcare, safety and security that India is implementing in partnership with Australia. We've got uh, a very um, modern, contemporary education system where we are fostering good researchers, mentoring researchers who are coming through the system and I understand that in India you've got a dearth of PhD students. Uh, many of the PhDs might go abroad but they might not come back. So I think you've got a, a deficit of PhD students. So Australia and our, particularly our research intensive universities are very keen to collaborate with some of the best institutions in India and to uh, mentor these new researchers coming into the system. It's a battle that usually begins in old age. The mind is unable to control a shaky body. Uncontrollable body movements make it next to impossible for the patient to even perform the most basic of existential needs. And anxiety and depression are common symptoms. The world of science has yet not been able to find a cure for Parkinson's. But India and Australia are partaking in this fight in a bid to help find a permanent medical solution using stem cells. In Parkinson's disease what happens is a specific set of neurons they degenerate inside the brain and what uh, the current therapy that's available in the market is uh, cannot cure the disease from the roots. Basically they just suppress the symptoms. Dr. Subhadeep has been a front-runner in the research process that Indian Institute of Technology Bombay and Monash University Australia have jointly undertaken through a unique collaboration to cure Parkinson's. The very beginnings of the partnership are interactions, relationships between researchers at IITB and at Monash. And from those came the understanding in the university, at least in Monash University, that there were all sorts of possibilities that could be pursued in terms of research between these two great institutions. The study has found that self-assembled, amyloid-based hydrogels can provide support to the transplanted stem cells. It's basically a hydrogel that uh, uh, gives the, uh, a better life to the stem cells, at least they survive three times better. This helps the cells survive and develop into neurons, which not only prevent progression of the disease, but also cure the patient. They prevent the migration of the stem cells to the unwanted areas of the brain. The fact that these are biodegradable ensures that they won't be present in the brain forever. This newly discovered stem cell system could be highly cost effective and a potential long term solution in the cure for Parkinson's. That research is an important way of delivering significant health benefits by growing stem cells that will tackle neurodegenerative diseases. The partnership goes beyond Parkinson's to other medical fields as well. Since 2008, IIT Bombay and Monash University have been working on multiple projects in areas of strategic importance for healthcare that the world is grappling with. There have been more than 60 students who have graduated and they have gone on to undertake further research either in industry or in academia pursuing the fields that they started in the academy and they are spread across the world. Each student is chosen, selected against a very specific PhD topic. So what that means is that you can match the capability of the student extremely well to that of the project. And from the industry perspective, they like to fund research where the, the topic is defined up front. This innovative collaboration goes on to establish the importance of bringing together the best minds in the field of research from India and Australia to help solve global medical problems. 
So in terms of the success of the collaboration, I think it's been quite good. We've reached scale. Um, the students get the exposure to Australia, so uh, every student in the academy has to necessarily spend one year at Monash. And that brings with it its own advantages. It also serves as an example to show how seamlessly professionals across borders can come together in this age of connectivity to work towards a common goal. The two institutions said we could do something in research that will make a very big difference. If the research was to bring out positive results, the battle against Parkinson's could soon become a fight of the past and men and women across the world would be able to trade today's misery for a healthier tomorrow. In Australia we have a very vibrant research network across health and if you look at Australia's Nobel Prizes, we've won 16 in our very short history and half of them have been in the area of medicine and physiology, clinical medicine in particular. So I think there's huge opportunity for Australia and India to work together. When it comes to research, the George Institute of Global Health is a non-profit organization that works relentlessly towards the cause of improving rural health of millions around the world using smart technologies across clinical trials, cardiovascular and other fields of healthcare. I think the, the exchange and collaboration is seamless, unique. We have almost every uh, other day some or the other sort of meeting with our Australian colleagues where uh, research ideas are discussed, proposals are, are, are brought forward and we, we write combined proposals which are funded by uh, both Australian and Indian funding agencies. Uh, we see the future of George Institute and George Clinical as a very positive one in India. We're very excited to be here. We celebrate 10 years this year which is you know, quite a landmark for an Australian institution. Uh, we're a great employer, we have over 100 people, we have three offices. We're starting to network very well across government. Uh, I think in the last two years uh, we're becoming very well known and really we're a very trusted independent organisation that can help government, pharmaceutical, can also help industry as well establish themselves here. Australian medical implants company Anatomics is another example of how titanium-based, 3D printed, totally customized implants are the future of medicine, especially when it comes to orthopedic reconstructions. We get the patient imaging data and then that data is uh, used to design an implant. And then this uh, in implant design is shared with the doctor as it is custom made not just for the patient but for the procedure and for the surgeon as well. Once uh, the implant design is approved by the surgeon, then we go ahead and manufacture it by 3D printing. Anatomics has already forayed into Asia with regional headquarters being established in Singapore and hopes to make inroads into the Indian market. The journey would first begin with education of Indian doctors on the possibilities that now exist. For patient specific solutions, uh, to become uh, a more dominant or uh, widespread uh, phenomenon is uh, engagement and awareness building among the clinical community. After the break, we get you the story of mechanizing underground coal mining to make this highly dangerous profession reasonably safer and extremely efficient. overcast sky in the picturesque lush green interiors of West Bengal. The road turns into Chanjara and before you know it, you are on the surface of one of the largest underground coal mines of India. Operational since 1985, today the Eastern Coal Fields Chanjara Mine produces 12,000 tons of coal a day, working round the clock all year long across an area 15 square kilometers wide and almost 300 meters deep. We have a conventional mining. We have a continuous miner uh, technology. We have a long wall production technology. So we have a mass production technology. This mine having a mass production technology. And uh, this type of technology, this different type of technology is not available in one mine in India. 
these conveyor belts transport to the surface the output of the grit and determination of 1700 miners that work every day deep in the dark belly of the earth in perhaps some of the most grueling working conditions where the naked eye can only see pitch black. Their gap lamps and protective gear keep them going into the darkest corners underground to extract coal that lights up the country. The capacity of the mine is 2.8 million ton, but we are very uh, optimistic that we will produce the, around the 3 million ton of production in this year. Until just last year, miners would walk with their equipment for as much as 3 hours a day just to get to their work zones. That would consume a good part of their 8 hour shift while also risking safety during the long dark walk. Australian mining equipment company Valley Longwall International saw an opportunity to empower ECL with underground man transporters to improve productivity through speed and safety. The answer lay in deploying the right man for the job who could share the possibilities that the Drift Runner underground mining vehicle offered. Well, actually, I went to Australia in an underground mine and I saw that you know how people are actually trans being transported in the drift runner like uh, the one we have over here and then I came to India and I saw that people in the mines are actually walking having to walk underground and that's where I thought that perhaps you know in India we should introduce uh, this type of a machine what looks like a Hummer and costs as much as a Ferrari the robust drift runner is equipped with a powerful pneumatic engine Flame-proof technology and methane sensors that cut off ignition with even the smallest presence of the highly flammable gas underground. It's a flame-proof, uh, specifically designed for underground coal mines, uh, with enhanced safety features like uh, unlike a normal motor vehicle, uh, like you have the water jacketing and flame-proof uh, componentry in the engine itself under the hood. Made in Australia, the Drifty, as it is fondly called, gives mining underground an edge of efficiency like never before. So available hours are increasing, so that the productivity and production is also increasing. The Drift Tunnel is designed to cater to the deep inclines of the tunnels of comprehensive and long wall underground mining. The long stretches of underground trekking by foot get reduced to zero as the drift runner travels underground to its designated parking space. Workers come down through a shaft till this point and then move into the drifty that can carry up to 16 miners at one time, clocking up to 20 kilometers an hour to take miners to their respective mining zones. Underground walking is not easy in a coal mine. It's like walking in a mountain, you know, with ups and downs, and they have to literally walk with a stick. But now they can simply ride in our machine and uh, travel, you know, freely with the materials as well. If they're carrying any uh, gear, safety gear, they can carry that very easily. Prem Shankar Cha is among the oldest miners in Eastern Coal Fields Chanjara mines. He has walked the dark underground stretches for years. As he reflects on his past and that of fellow miners, one can sense the improvement in the quality of life and safety of miners today. इतने मिन पावर को अपने काम के जगह पर पहुंचाना अभी भी तीन गाड़ी मात्र हमारे पास है तो अभी भी मुश्किल है लेकिन बहुत आसान हो गया while Coal India that operates eastern coal mines has so far inducted only three drift runners in the country, there is scope to further mechanize Indian mine fields to help them produce to their optimum capacity. In terms of productivity, in terms of efficiency and, and absolutely in terms of safety. So there's a real opportunity for skills transfer, for knowledge transfer from Australian companies across to Indian mining companies and I think that, that is a very, very important part of our relationship. 
another player in the power equipment sector and other engineering products is ABB. ABB India has partnered with RMIT University Australia to develop an innovative collaboration technology that helps integrating software and hardware across remote locations. Where a team of experts in one corner of the world can control a manufacturing process in another corner remotely. You can do it remotely. Uh, because then you are able to access the system whether it is in remote location of Australia or in India or some mines or oil and gas field and, and uh, manufacturing location so you are able to uh, remotely access you, then you can uh, analyze whether the setting of the equipment sensor actuator they are properly done or not if not they, you can change it so that they can uh, perform uh, optimally What's more this technology reduces the lead time of programming robots from 60 to 90 days previously to under a week today. Plus, there are also applications which are running on the server. There are also applications which are running on the cloud. So you can uh, do the fleet analytics of all these systems, machines, uh, you know, components uh, in the cloud so that you can you know, uh, achieve a higher level of efficiency and uh, productivity. ABB is also using this technology to reduce skilling and training costs by connecting domain experts and trainees across geographies for time and cost efficiencies. Can India enhance safety of passengers and goods across the thousands of kilometers of train tracks running through the country? Australia may have some solutions. India has had a bad spate of rail accidents in the past few months. While the causes may be varied and inquiries could throw up results in coming times, there are some preemptive technologies that could potentially enhance safety on train tracks. Track IQ is an Australian manufacturer of wayside detection equipment or sensors like these placed alongside railway tracks. These sensors pick up the RFID signature of every train wagon that passes through and monitors sound waves of the wagon's bearings. It then maps this sound signature against an optimum graph and checks for abnormalities to signal a warning ahead of a probable disaster. The benefits of this to our customers is that it means in real time they get up-to-date information on the status of the train they can use that information to, over a period of time, undertake a trend analysis on, on the condition and the status of the vehicle. We provide all the software that goes along with, uh, with our installations, and that software enables our customers to uh, monitor and, uh, and identify any faults and transition their behaviour from being that of a reactive or a cyclic maintenance uh, model to, to one of uh, um, predictive maintenance. Track IQ has partnered with RT Vision in India and signed an MOU with the Indian Railways to install such early warning sensors across stations. A test project is already running 20 kilometers ahead of Lucknow with a fully functional control center that analyzes bearing sounds. You save on maintenance costs, you save on new bearing costs and there will be a lot of saving apart from safety. And what I feel is that uh, railway has taken a very bold decision in India to promote this technology. Another Australian company, Sidac, part of German auto components manufacturer Nor Brems, has its simulation development center in Pune. These simulators are designed to skill train drivers to weather any internal or external scenarios and equip them with the training to take a right decision. As part of its $30 million contract with the Indian Railways, Adelaide-based SIDAC simulation technologies will help train thousands of drivers in India holistically and efficiently. Indian Railways has been a, a very experienced user of technology and while they have uh, installed a number of simulators pan-India and SIDAC was successful in delivering 12 of these training centers most recently, Indian Railways through its transformation cell is looking at really a broad pan-India uh, situation where they will deliver up to 
maybe up to 400 SIM letters right across India's 16 train our divisions within Indian Railways. So we really see a very bright future for Indian Railways as they roll out the technology uh, right across India in, in the near future. These simulators reflect every detail of a vehicle's operatable area and the technology is not restricted to trains alone. Simulator-based training has gained confidence the world over as one of the most effective methods for skilling drivers. A large number of companies are making extensive use of SIDAC simulation systems as it helps cut down on training time and cost while providing all necessary fundamentals that the job entails. SIDAC has been supplying simulators in the, across the globe for past 30 years. We have had numerous good feedbacks from Europe from UK, uh, even from our recent installations in India on the railway side, we have received positive feedback on the use of our technology and how it is helping the customer to better train and equip their drivers to deal with the, especially the situations which you don't encounter in everyday life. Australia-based DTG Transportation Technology thrives on its driver advisory system, Energy Miser. As the name suggests, Energy Miser is a miser when it comes to power usage. Its integrated screen offers a dashboard for the driver to help him ascertain cruise and coast options that will enable on-time destination arrival while economizing the use of fuel or power. TTG are proud of its uh, involvement in India and most recently we've completed a study for the Dedicated Freight Corridors Corporation, a World Bank funded study to look at the energy optimization of the new freight corridors in India. So we've been able to advise uh, DFCC on you know, how to schedule the DFCC network and minimize the energy uh, consumption across that network. A significant piece of work, uh, we're very pl proud of that. Um, prior to that, uh, we've been working with Indian Rail on a project called Gold, which is to uh, provide an energy optimization driving advice system for Indian Rail. We've run trials successfully there. We've demonstrated the potential for that technology, and we're now working with Indian Rail you know, to advance that to a deployment. Next week, we bring you stories of how Australia and India are collaborating to change the face of infrastructure in India at both physical and social fronts of the Indian society. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.